depending on the individual regulation for a given diesel engine application, the engine owner may have a number of ways to comply with this program, including replacing the engines with cleaner engines, retiring the engines from service, or retrofitting the engines. This module, Module 1-2, provides you, the fleet administrator, with a detailed process for selecting the proper retrofits for your engines. Selecting the proper retrofit devices is a crucial step in order for your fleet to be successfully retrofitted and achieve retrofit program compliance. How to select the proper retrofit. After consulting the ARB's diesel activity page on the website, I now have a clear idea what regulations affect my diesel engines as well as my overall responsibilities. Now I want to figure out which retrofit devices are available. So how do I go about finding out which retrofits could be installed on my diesel engine? For most engine makes and models, there are several brands of diesel emission control strategies or retrofits to choose from that have been verified by the ARB. Wait a second. Verified by ARB. What does that mean and how does that help me? Well, ARB has strict requirements for manufacturers to sell retrofits that control diesel exhaust in California. Before devices can be sold, they must be tested and be proven effective in reducing particulate matter. The devices must also be operated for 1,000 hours on test vehicles or engines to prove that they are durable. The testing and verification process takes many months to complete and it culminates in the product verified to meet the level 1, 2, or 3 emission reduction levels. As a reminder, a level 1 device reduces particulate emissions by 25%. A level 2 reduces by 50% and a level 3 is the most effective device with 85% or more reduction. ARB issues an executive order to the manufacturer that lists the conditions under which the particular device can be sold and installed on diesel engines in this state. ARB verification ensures your retrofit reduces particulate emissions and provides a product and installation warranty for up to five years depending on the engine application. So how do I find out which ones will work on my diesel engines? There's a couple of ways to do that. You can either contact a private company that supplies and installs retrofits, and they can give you the choices they offer, or you can find them on your own computer. Tell me how to find them on a computer. Okay, before we do that, you will need some information ready in order to conduct this search. Each retrofit is only verified for specific engine makes and models, as well as specific operations in many cases. Before we start, you will need to have your engine's make, model, model year, and engine family name. Engine family name? Where do I get that? That's on the emission control label fixed to your engine by the engine manufacturer. Emission control labels are on the vast majority of engines, but very old engines may not have engine family names. This is particularly true for off-road engines. However, the ARB website provides guidance on how to find engine family names for off-road engines on its website. Now before we go any further, I want to reiterate that any engine you choose to retrofit must be first in excellent operating condition, tuned up, and meeting manufacturer specifications. For example, you should not attempt to install retrofit on an engine that is consuming loop oil excessively or emitting high amounts of smoke. Therefore, if you have an engine that should be rebuilt or undergo emissions related maintenance in the near future, you must fix it before you can retrofit. So it would be useful to have the maintenance reports for your engines handy to determine which engines need repairing. If I have a retrofit installed on an engine needing this kind of maintenance, the device may soon plug up and be inoperable, right? You're absolutely right. Also, the retrofit is not allowed to be installed on the engine unless it meets the engine manufacturer's operating conditions. If your engine goes out of specifications, it will result in a badly plugged up filter that may ultimately cause your engine to not operate. Just keep in mind that your engines must be well maintained always. Okay, let's log into the ARB website to see the wide variety of retrofits that are available for all types of heavy duty diesel engines. This is a very important and helpful page that you may want to become familiar with as you proceed with retrofitting your various diesel engines. Essentially, this page links you to the ARB sites that lists the various retrofit devices verified by ARB and available for all types of diesel engines and directs you to the devices available for each specific engine family name. Let's take a few minutes and walk through this page together. Okay. Here we find the currently verified DECS table link. Now this table lists all the ARB verified retrofits for all types of heavy duty diesel engine applications such as trucks, buses, off-road vehicles, 
transportation refrigeration units, cargo handling equipment, stationary engines, among others. The applicability boxes on the right side of the table give an explanation of what the device is verified for. Since this table lists all the products currently verified, it's a valuable screening tool to confirm all the brands of retrofit devices that are available. If you were to choose to rely totally on a retrofit installer, and if that installer said that only the products it sells are available and nothing else is available for your engines, by consulting this table you can cross check to see if that's really true. That's great. I'll have all the information at my fingertips to help me make a correct purchasing decision. What do I do next? Well, now that you have an idea of what retrofits are available, you can either contact an installer directly or do more research on your own to select the specific devices. Well, let's say I want to do this research myself. Okay. Well, let's click on the next link on the Heavy Duty DECS installation maintenance page, that being the verification database. With the engine family name you have here for your engines, you can find precisely which retrofit systems are verified for that family. Let's click on this link. First thing, up comes the verification procedure disclaimer which you must read. Basically it tells you that as the fleet administrator you are ultimately responsible to evaluate whether the recommended device will function properly on your particular engines. In addition, ARB's executive order for a given device must be reviewed by you to make sure you understand any special conditions for using the device on your engine. I agree. Do I check the box now? Sure. A new page is going to come up which gives you three ways to browse the available retrofits. You can browse by selecting the name of the mission control system itself or by selecting engine model year, make, and displacement. Or another way, would be by inputting the engine family name which is the most direct way to see which devices have been verified for this engine. Let's put in your engine family name to demonstrate. Up comes the actual retrofit device verification database page. There are 13 retrofit devices listed for this engine family. There's quite a few choices, huh? How do I choose the right one? That is to a major degree dependent on the regulation that controls the emissions from your type of engine application. Most of the regulations require the highest level DECS, that being a level 3. So I would advise you to ignore the less efficient level 1 and level 2 devices for now and begin reviewing the level 3 devices. You can click on a given device name to understand how it works and then click on the executive order column to confirm that this device should potentially function on your vehicle as long as all listed conditions are met. This is a very important step because there are specific criteria established for each device and its engine application. Such criteria may include the minimum exhaust temperatures required for the device as well as compatibility with biodiesel fuel with exhaust gas recirculation or EGR and numerous other conditions. This seems very technical. Is it necessary I read about all these products? It's to your benefit to be fully aware of the retrofits that potentially may or may not work in your fleet. Also there could be significant functional advantages that might make one brand of a device clearly the superior choice for you. Doing this homework will help you in making the correct purchasing decision. After I select a retrofit, what should I do? Can I install it myself? Whether or not to install it yourself requires careful consideration. Retrofit device manufacturers require that installers to be trained by the manufacturers. Installers are required to warranty their installations also. Retrofits come with warranties of up to five years, depending on the engine application, but manufacturers will not necessarily honor that warranty if the device was poorly installed. If you have staff technically capable of performing the installation to the manufacturer's requirements, then you will need to contact the manufacturer to obtain the training for your staff. Otherwise, you'll need to choose a manufacturer trained installer. On the Heavy Duty DECS installation maintenance page, you can click on the appropriate link to find a list of the installers. Okay, what's next? Up to this point, the retrofit selection procedure we've been discussing essentially applies to all types of heavy duty diesel engines. However, there is some additional information you should know when selecting retrofits for off-road diesel engines. Let's cover that now, okay? Sounds good. You follow the same steps in navigating the ARB website to arrive at the Retrofit Device Verification Database page for your given off-road or stationary engine family. 
Here, we'll see a list of level 3 and level 2 devices as only these two levels are allowed on these engines. You will need the engine family name to determine which retrofit devices will be available for your engine. However, engine family names are often not found on the engine labels for off-road equipment, so you may need to contact an installer to help you identify your engine family. As I mentioned, the oldest engines may not have engine family names. If the installer can't identify it, the installer will then contact the engine manufacturer with the engine serial number. With the serial number, the manufacturer can readily determine the engine family name. By the way, this is the same process to follow if any type of engine does not have a label. Typically, this is a straightforward process, and it should only take a few days to hear back from the manufacturer. When you have the engine family name, you can go back to the ARB website, make your retrofit selections, and read the corresponding ARB executive orders. As for on-road engines, the retrofits you choose for your off-road or stationary engines must comply with the criteria specified in the executive orders, such as the vehicle must meet the minimum exhaust temperature requirement, use carb diesel fuel, only 20% biodiesel is allowed, and so on. Now on off-road vehicles, uh, what if uh, this level 3 retrofit cannot be physically or safely installed? Let's discuss that. As with all retrofits, most likely you'll want to begin with selecting level 3 devices for your engine since they're the most effective in reducing PM. Once you have made some preliminary selections of the level 3 retrofits, the installer needs to examine your engines to determine if the installation of these devices can physically be accomplished and meets government safety regulations. If the installer and retrofit manufacturer conclude that the given retrofit cannot be installed safely or otherwise on your engine, the manufacturer or installer will have to issue a letter to you indicating this condition. Any such letters you receive will need to be kept on file. And you'll have to complete this procedure for all level 3 devices first before you can consider any level 2 devices. However, I recommend checking your regulatory requirements for your given engine application on whether approval is required by ARB staff before you can use lower level devices. In any case, it's very likely that you will find a retrofit that is compatible with your engines and can be safely installed. What if I don't agree with the installer and I think the installation does not meet safety standards? Go to the ARB homepage and click on the Diesel Activity page. Go to the regulation which covers your given engine application. Here you'll find a list of staff persons in ARB who can help mediate any installation or safety issue. Contact the appropriate person and it's likely that any issues can be cleared up quickly and informally. For your off-road engines, you can pursue a formal process to request a safety exemption which is explained on the webpage. You have to prepare documentation and cite which OSHA or MSHA regulations would be violated. You may also have to provide any published reports and other findings to support your claim of potentially unsafe installation. This material would be submitted to the ARB Executive Office for a ruling. My advice would be to try to first resolve the issue informally with an ARB staff to save some time. You know, that really makes sense. And it really does help to have an ARB person to contact. Well, we believe so too. Once you've selected a retrofit that can be installed on your engine, the next step would be data logging. This is needed to determine the average engine exhaust temperature that's required for some retrofit devices to function properly. Later on, I'll describe that process. Be sure to watch the remaining video modules in this series, Emissions Retrofits, What Diesel Fleet Administrators Need to Know. For more information, or if you have any questions, please consult these sources of information provided by the Air Resources Board.